In 2016, on the dry mountain slopes of the Sahara Desert, a team of German engineers built giant mesh frames, each more than 6 meters tall, to catch moisture at an altitude of over 2,000 meters. Tiny droplets of mist condensed on the nets, slowly gathering into streams of cool, drinkable water, something once considered a luxury in this arid land. But what brought the Germans all the way to Africa to hang nets across the mountains? And how can a simple mesh turn fog into real water? Let's find out together with Mandarin Tech in today's video. For decades, the anti-Atlas region in southern Morocco has been almost forgotten, trapped between the dry winds of the Sahara Desert. Here, rain falls only a few times a year, and the dry season can last for hundreds of days. Groundwater's running out, while the remaining wells are salty and full of minerals, undrinkable for humans. Around 60% of the population has no running water at home. Every morning, women and children walk several kilometers across rocky slopes just to bring back a few jugs of water from the valley below. Water has become a burden, not only for daily life, but also for education, health, and agriculture. Ironically, in the early mornings, thick fog from the Atlantic Ocean often covers these mountains, only to disappear within hours wasted, untouched. This paradox inspired the Water Foundation from Germany to join forces with local engineers and launch a bold idea, harvesting water from fog. They called it Cloud Fisher, a system that captures and condenses moisture from the air, turning it into real, drinkable water. This invention was created by the Water Foundation in collaboration with industrial designer Peter Troutwein in Munich. The technology harvests water from fog, a hidden source of water in the air that most people would never expect. The first step the German scientists took in this project was to travel to Morocco and survey the actual site. They noticed that the areas near the Atlantic Ocean and the Atlas Mountains often have thick morning fog. During their field trips, they found moss growing heavily on rocks and tree trunks, a clear sign of high humidity in the air. Their analysis showed that the fog here contains a large amount of water vapor, which can be captured and turned into clean water. With that discovery, the German team worked together with local communities in Morocco to choose the right location and begin the pilot project. For 18 months, the team tested many types of nets before finally selecting a special 3D mesh that offered the best water harvesting efficiency. These nets were mounted on solid steel frames, forming a giant wall of fog on the mountain. The Cloud Fisher system is designed like a massive mesh wall standing in midair, where moist winds from the Atlantic blow fog across the slopes of the Anti-Atlas Mountains. After carefully surveying the terrain and wind patterns, the German engineers began preparing the foundation for the fog collecting system. They hired local African workers, people already familiar with the harsh soil and climate, to dig large pits nearly a meter deep for the steel support posts. These pits would serve as the anchor points keeping the mesh frames stable against the strong winds blowing in from the Atlantic. On the rugged rocky slope, the engineers and local villagers begin carrying the heavy steel frame pieces, step by step hauling them up to the installation site as cold winds sweep in from the Atlantic. Once the frame is lifted upright, they hold the steel posts firmly while their teammates lock the joints and tighten the bolts, securing the entire structure into the solid rock to withstand the strong desert winds. Higher up, workers wearing safety harnesses climb the ladders and hang above the ground to stretch each 3D mesh panel onto the steel frame, carefully adjusting every strand to form a massive, fog-catching wall across the mountaintop. At the heart of the system is a double-layer 3D mesh made from ultra-durable polyethylene, a material resistant to UV radiation, corrosion, and the extreme temperature swings between day and night. The two layers are stretched parallel to each other, creating millions of tiny gaps where fog droplets get trapped as they pass through. When the mesh captures the fog, it needs a proper channel to collect every drop, and that's when the water gutter is installed. The technicians hold the V-shaped composite gutter in place, then tighten each hook and steel bolt to secure it snugly beneath the mesh frame. 
Every connection is carefully adjusted to make sure that all the condensed droplets flow straight into the gutter and into the collection pipe without losing a single drop. Finally, they secure all the connection points to make sure the gutter is firmly attached to the mesh frame and won't shift under strong winds. Every contact point is tightened one more time, ensuring the water flows straight into the collection pipe without any loss. Each Cloudfisher unit is built as an independent modular structure, assembled using only a few simple tools, no heavy machinery required, no electricity, no fuel, no noise, only wind, fog, and gravity. This simplicity is exactly what makes Cloudfisher one of the most sustainable water harvesting technologies in the world. Perfectly suited for arid, remote regions where drilling wells or building dams is nearly impossible. From a distance, the nets look like white sails in a sea of sand, filled with wind and silently fishing water out of the air. The principle behind the Cloudfisher is simple, yet refined to near perfection. When wind carries fog across the 3D mesh panels, the tiny moisture droplets in the air collide with the cool fiber surface and begin to condense. At first, they form tiny shimmering beads on the mesh, but as more accumulate, they merge into larger drops. Guided by gravity and the slanted frame, those droplets slowly slide downward and fall into the gutter positioned parallel to the ground. From the gutter, the water flows through a sealed plastic pipe system, traveling to a central storage tank located hundreds of meters or even several kilometers away. The result is a closed, elegant, and sustainable cycle. Fog becomes water and water becomes life. On average, a system with about 10 Cloudfisher panels can collect from 600 to 1,000 liters of water per day, enough to supply an entire village with all of its daily needs. Even during the hottest, driest months, when temperatures soar above 40 Punera and the sky is completely cloudless, the Cloudfisher continues to pull in clear droplets, providing clean water for thousands of people living in the scorching desert. According to local residents, they used to spend three to four hours every day just to collect 20 to 25 liters of water, barely enough for a family's daily needs. But now with the Cloudfisher system, they simply turn on the tap and have water for cooking, washing, bathing, and even watering plants, something once unimaginable in the desert. However, fog water isn't free. The German team turned it into a sustainable business model. People pay for water based on how much they use, just like a regular water bill. The more they consume, the higher the cost, averaging around 1.2, 1.5 USD per cubic meter. This approach helps prevent waste and encourages responsible use of precious water resources in such an extremely dry environment. But for people in the lowest income groups who can't afford anything else, they walk nearly three miles every day to collect river water outside the remote mountain areas of Morocco. They spend hours scooping up contaminated water from hand-dug pits knowing it's unsafe but still having no other option, because it's the only water source for miles. They carry the heavy jerry cans, almost 20 kilograms, strapped to their backs, taking slow, exhausting steps as they bring the water home to their families. Back to the Cloudfisher system. From spring 2016 to the end of 2018, the German team completed the largest fog harvesting installation in the world, located in Morocco. With more than 1,590 square meters of 3D mesh, the project now provides clean water for 15 villages, 1,250 people, and a school, while also supporting agriculture and 7,000 livestock. To date, 31 cloudfishers have been installed, all connected by 26 kilometers of pipelines and five storage tanks with a total capacity of nearly 1,000 cubic meters. On average, every square meter of mesh collects 22 liters of water per year. Altogether, the 31 Cloudfishers can produce more than 36,000 liters of water per day, equal to tens of millions of liters each year. What makes the system even more impressive is that it requires no energy, needs almost no maintenance, and essentially works as a one-time investment that keeps operating for years, completely environmentally friendly. That's how Europeans make use of hidden resources in the desert, even though they don't actually live there. Pretty impressive, right? 
But get ready because what comes next is even more unbelievable. The Chinese don't just use the desert, they turn entire stretches of it green. For centuries, northern China has lived with an invisible enemy, sand. Each time monsoon winds swept down from the Gobi and Taklamakan deserts, massive dust storms blanketed the skies over Beijing, turning day into night. By the 1990s, there were years when residents in the capital had to wear masks for more than 80 days, just to avoid breathing in the fine dust blowing from the desert. This extreme climate, combined with deforestation, overgrazing, and excessive groundwater extraction, exhausted the soil and destroyed vegetation, paving the way for uncontrolled desertification to spread across northern China. Faced with the growing threat of desertification, China chose not to back down. In 1978, the government launched a century-scale initiative, the Three North Shelter Belt Program, known to the world as the Green Great Wall. This is not a single forest wall, but rather a vast network of thousands of forests, windbreak belts, and ecological lakes stretching more than 4,500 kilometers from the Xinjiang Autonomous Region all the way to Heilongjiang Province, covering nearly the entire northern part of China. The goal, to plant 35 million hectares of new forest by 2050, increasing the country's forest coverage from just 10% in 1949 to over 25% today. It is considered the largest human-made project ever built on land, not with concrete or steel, but with determination and the color green of life itself. From here, humanity's dream of reviving the dead lands truly began. So what exactly did the Chinese do in this billion-dollar program? They began not with concrete or heavy machinery, but with a measured plan. Across the Taklamakan Desert, Chinese engineers surveyed the terrain using satellite mapping and drones to analyze dune movement and wind direction. Based on those data, they designed a massive grid system. Straw checkerboards laid diagonally across the sand, each square about 20 by 20 feet. Across the burning dunes of western China, straw is spread out in neat geometric patterns. From above, the land looks like a gigantic checkerboard of golden squares stretching all the way to the horizon. Yet behind that simple image lies a massive engineering operation, complex, expensive, and carried out under brutal conditions. Millions of pounds of straw are transported hundreds of miles into the heart of the desert, where vehicles often sink into soft sand and paved roads simply don't exist. Once there, Teams of workers begin by digging shallow trenches and placing bundles of straw into precise grid lines. Under the relentless sun, with temperatures rising above 49 degrees Celsius and no shade in sight, every movement feels like a battle against heat and exhaustion. Still, thousands of Chinese workers persist. Because each grid of straw is more than just a barrier, it's the foundation for life to return. The woven pattern stabilizes the shifting dunes, slows the wind, and creates microzones where moisture can linger long enough for planting to begin. Once the grid is in place, mechanical augers and planting machines move in. These machines drill small holes at the center of each square, preparing the soil for drought-resistant species such as saxol, desert poplar, and red willow. The seedlings, carefully nurtured in nurseries before being brought to the desert, are then transplanted in each hole at the center of the straw grid. Each young plant is positioned with precision so that its fragile roots settle just below the surface, where the straw layer shields them from the scorching sun and the shifting sand. Workers add a measured amount of water and compact the soil around the base to ensure that the roots make full contact with the moist layer beneath. As weeks go by, the protective grid continues to serve its purpose. The straw keeps the surface cooler, reduces evaporation, and prevents the fine sand from eroding around the seedlings. Over time, the straw gradually decomposes through wind, dew, and microorganisms, turning into an organic blanket rich in nutrients. This natural fertilizer feeds the developing root systems, helping them extend deeper into the stable soil layers below. 
What began as a few fragile seedlings slowly evolves into a living network of vegetation, a green framework that anchors the dunes and begins the long process of reclaiming the desert. So you've discovered, from the fog-catching nets of Europe to the forests that grow in the deserts of Asia, technology is quietly rewriting the future of the world's driest lands. And that's just the beginning. See you on the next Mandarin Tech Journey, where each story opens a new perspective on the power of humans and science.